So character rigging can actually be really fun, it's very useful, and oftentimes very necessary to get good character animations. So in this quick 10 minute tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create a standard character rig ready for animation with constraints and everything. And you should be ready to start animating characters immediately after this Blender 2.8 tutorial. So I hope you guys are excited and let's jump right into it. So for this tutorial, we're using our low poly character that we created in a previous low poly tutorial. You guys can check that out with the link on the screen. And we're just gonna start off by placing our cursor on the center of our character and going Shift A to add in an armature. An armature is basically an object that contains all of your bones. I like to jump over to our armature settings then and under viewport display, enable in front. This will allow you to see your bones through the character mesh, which makes it a lot easier to work on your armature, obviously. So now I'm just gonna move that bone up to about the belly button area of your character, right above the hips, and then I'm gonna pull that bone down. And this is actually gonna be our hip controller. So just moving over to side view, I'm gonna grab that bone and straighten it up so it's in the center of our character. And with that bone in place, we can start extruding some more bones out. So that first bone is the controller bone that we'll be using later on, and now I'm just extruding up the base hip bone. Now I'm gonna go ahead and extrude again by hitting E and pulling that bone up to be around chest level and then extrude again for a chest bone all the way up to the neck, and then extrude again for another bone for that neck, and then one more time for a bone on the head. But that is all the bones we need for the chest slash head area on our low poly character. I'm just gonna straighten out some of these bones now by moving them to a little bit more of the center of the rig. If you're an artist looking to start an online presence to share your work, or maybe create an awesome looking portfolio, then you should be really excited about this video sponsor, Hostinger. Hostinger provides some really fast, affordable web hosting services with great customer support to help you succeed online. I've had some time now to look through and use their site, and I've been really impressed by some of their powerful tools and how easy everything seems to be to use. They offer many options and tools for picking the perfect domain name, great for getting anyone off their feet and running with their own website. Plus, I have a coupon code for you guys to make this one of the most affordable web hosting services you will find. So go to hostinger.com slash cggeek with that link in the description and use the coupon code cggeek to save up to 91% off yearly web hosting plans to succeed faster. And now I'm gonna go ahead and place my cursor right around the collarbone of our character on the right side. Make sure we're in edit mode and hit shift A to add in a new bone. This is going to be our shoulder bone and it's going to go just to the beginning of the arm there. We can go ahead and select that bone and again, pull it inside of the mesh so it's lined up nicely with our character. And then we'll grab that tip and extrude out the upper bone for the arm, stopping right around the elbow and there we'll extrude out one more bone. Then jumping to top view, I'm gonna go ahead and position those bones again so they're inside of our mesh nicely. Then I'll grab the tip of the last bone and extrude out one more bone for the hand. I'm not gonna be doing any finger rigging in this tutorial as it's just a basic rig and our character doesn't even have fingers, so we don't have to worry about that. After a little bit of repositioning, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna place my cursor down on his right hip, still in edit mode, and hit Shift A to add in another bone. This is going to be going all the way down to his knee as sort of the hip bone. Again, jumping to side view and making sure it's positioned inside the mesh. Then we can go ahead and grab that tip and extrude down the shin bone all the way down to the foot. And then jumping to side view, we can extrude that bone one more time for the foot bone all the way out to the toes. At any time now, you can just grab that bone joint and pull it back to position it better in your mesh. And then jump into top view, we need to grab the tip of the toe and of course straighten it out and pull it over along the X axis. And there we have it, we have all the bones we need. We'll be duplicating the right side over to the left side later on. So now it's time to name our bones, jumping over to the bone settings there and just entering the name for every corresponding bone. It's kind of boring, I know, and I usually don't name my objects because I'm lazy, but in this case, I highly recommend naming all of your bones as it will be very necessary later on. Now for the arm and leg bones, you're gonna wanna finish off every one of your names with a dot R as this is gonna be how we tell apart the bones from the right side to the left side. Now it's time to add some controller bones for our constraints. So I'm grabbing that bottom bone at the bottom of the foot there and extruding it backwards. And this is gonna be our IK controller. Now we need a bone to point the knee at. So I'm placing my cursor right in front of the knee there and going shift A to add in another bone and moving it so it's lined up horizontally along with the knee. Now I'm also gonna add one of these bones for the elbow. This is gonna be for keeping the elbow joint in line with our IK constraints for animating. So go ahead and place your cursor behind the 
elbow on the right arm there and go ahead and shift A, add in another bone and line it up again along the horizontal axis there. Now I need a controller for the arm constraints I'll be using. So I'm gonna shift D and duplicate the hand bone there. But I wanna be able to scale this bone up to be able to tell it apart from the hand bone. So I'm gonna go over to our armature settings and change the display as to B bones, as this will allow me to scale the bones up just for visual reference to be able to tell them apart. So now I can grab that controller bone and control alt S to scale it up and make this a bit bigger than the hand bone. Perfect, now go ahead and name this bone hand.control.r. Not like I do there, but with the .r at the end is actually what I'll change it to later on. Go ahead and name your leg control bone, something like leg control.r works perfect. And then we have to name those two bones for the knee point.r and the elbow point dot r as well that we just added in there now we're going to add one more bone and this is the master control bone so at the center of our character go shift a add in one more bone and then control alt s we'll scale that up a little bit to make it our main control bone placing it directly underneath our character. Now every bone needs to be parented to another bone. So we're gonna start off by grabbing our elbow pointer bone there and grabbing the shoulder bone and going control P, keep the offset. Now we can do the same thing for our elbow point bone there, grab that. And this time I'm gonna grab the controller bone for the leg and go control P, parent to keep the offset. Now select the very first bone we added as the hips controller, scale that up again with control alt S and go ahead and name it something like hips.control. Perfect. Now grabbing our upper leg bone, we're gonna grab the hips bone, not the hips controller, and go control P, keep the offset. And now we're gonna grab the shoulder bone and the chest bone, control P to keep the offset. That will work great. And now we're just gonna grab our three controller bones, the leg controller bone, the hand controller bone, and the hip controller bone, and then grab the master bone in the center and hit control P and keep the offset. Now we're ready to start adding some IK constraints to make animating really easy. So start by grabbing the upper bone on the leg, jumping over to pose mode, and then you can go to the bone constraints. We're gonna add a new bone constraint and choose inverse kinematics. For this, we're gonna choose a target of the armature. The bone is going to be that controller bone that we added. So the leg controller bone.r. Change the chain length to two. So it goes all the way up to the top of the leg bone there. And we're gonna add in the pointer bone that we did there. So again, choose armature. And then for that point pull target, we're going to choose the knee point.r. So you can see that messed up the rotation. You're just gonna to wanna to choose the pull angle of 90 degrees. And that's basically it for the IK constraint. If you grab your IK controller bone now, you can see that we can animate multiple bones at the same time by moving that controller bone. And this makes animating a whole lot easier. So now let's go ahead and do it for the arm. So we're gonna grab the lower arm bone, add a bone constraint, inverse kinematics again. And you're just gonna go through the same process of grabbing the target armature. The bone is going to be the arm control dot R. And then the pull target will be that armature again and the elbow bone this time to point it at the elbow. This time we'll give the pull angle 180 to point it right at that pointer bone. And now you can see if we grab that arm controller bone, we can move all of the bones in the arm at the same time by just moving that one bone. But you can see it's hinging in the wrong direction right now. And that's because I need to jump to edit mode and straighten out my bones here to kind of angle that elbow bone out just just a little bit so it hinges at the right point when we move the IK bone. So just by giving it a little bit of angle like I did there, you can see that now when I move the control bone, it hinges at the right point like a normal arm bone would do. So now we can make animating the hand even easier by having the hand bone copy the rotation of our controller bone. So to do this, we're just gonna grab our hand bone, add in a bone constraint, again in pose mode. This one's gonna be a copy rotation. We're gonna choose the armature, and then for the bone that we wanna copy, it's just going to be that hand control bone. Now all you have to do is rotate the IK controller bone and you can see that the hand also follows it. So we're not gonna have to animate two bones, instead we can just animate one bone. So to make sure you have your bones parented the right way, if you grab your hip controller bone, you should be able to move the arms and legs as you see here. But you can see if you rotate that hips controller, the whole chest and head rotate at the same time, maybe not what we want. So you can grab that chest bone, go over to the relations in the bone settings and uncheck inherent rotation. This will allow you to rotate that butt without having the chest bone move at all. Perfect. So now we're gonna do the same thing for the chest. We don't want the neck and head rotating. So just uncheck inherit rotation on the neck and you can rotate that chest without the head rotating as well. Another tip for areas of the human body that are a little bit more flabby, you can choose bendy bones and give it a few segments like on the stomach bone there. So there's a little bit of bend in the body as it rotates. Here I'm just gonna give ourselves a little bit more stomach bone there and a little bit less chest bone. So we have a little bit more bendiness in the stomach area of our character. 
Now we can add that copy rotation constraint again to the foot, just like we did to the hand by adding copy rotation on the foot bone, and in this case choosing the armature and the leg controller bone. Now we have to change the space from local space with parent to local space with parent. And once you do that, the bone will be back in place and you can rotate your bone and then also rotate the controller bone to rotate the foot. Now before we can apply the rig to our character, we wanna uncheck deform on all of our control bones. So I'm just going through to our leg and hand and master control bones and unchecking deform. Again, for those pointer and hip controllers, uncheck deform in the bone settings there, as we don't want these bones to actually affect the mesh at all, just the rig. Here I'm just making sure that I have everything named right with the last numbers in each bone being .r for the right side. And now that we have the parents and constraints all applied to everything on our right side of our character, we can go ahead and select all of the bones on the right side by jumping to edit mode, hitting C for select, and selecting all the bones only on the right side. And now I'm just going to jump to front view, place my cursor in the center of the scene by going Shift S, cursor to world origin. And now I'm gonna open up our properties tab by hitting N and choose X axis mirror under tool. Now I'm just gonna right click and choose symmetrize and this will copy all of the bones from the right over to the left and actually rename them correspondingly as well. So they're all dot L now on the other side as well as have all of the constraints and parents that we applied on the right side. So that's perfect and it's all ready to go. And you can see if I jump to pose mode now and start moving some of these bones, they're moving on both sides and that's because I have X axis mirror still enabled. So you wanna remember to turn that off and you can see that we have our constraints over now on the left side, but the elbow is bending in the wrong direction. So we're just gonna grab that IK constraint and change it to zero on the pull angle. And this is perfect for the left side now. You can see it works both on the right and left side. Same thing with the feet. These all work perfectly on the left side and they're ready for animation. So we're ready to apply our rig to our character. So go ahead and select your character in object mode and then select your rig and go control P and then choose with automatic weights. And this will automatically assign the bones to the corresponding spot of the mesh to control. So if you select your rig and jump to pose mode now, you can see if you grab one of your controller bones, the mesh is going to follow your armature now and it actually works really well. Woohoo! Woohoo! This is where it's really fun to just grab those controller bones and play with your rig, kind of break the mesh. Get those hip wiggles in, uh-huh, do some twerking, twerk it, twerk it, twerk it, twerk it, twerk it. So now if you grab the character and jump to weight paint, you can see we have all these vertex groups for our bones. And if we change the weight for any of these vertex groups, it's going to affect how much that bone affects the mesh. So for example, you can add or subtract more or less to that bone. So I'm choosing subtract right now, and I'm gonna grab the leg bone here and make it so it doesn't affect quite as much of the body when I rotate that bone. So just by subtracting some of that weight on both the left and right side, you can modify how much that bone affects the rig. And now you can see when I move my leg, the body doesn't move as well, but it's just the leg moving. And then the hips will of course control the rest of the body. So now I'm just quickly giving our character a pose with those control bones, showing you how easy it is to pose our entire mesh using that new armature that we just created in 10 minutes. Had man forgot not Joe, I'll be married long time ago. Where did you come from, where did you go? And as you can see, using a simple rig like this is super easy to pose your character in all kinds of different positions and of course animation as well. If you guys are interested in more animation, I have a tutorial on beginner animation that you guys can check out. And if you wanna recalculate your character's pose, all you have to do is jump to pose mode, select all the bones and go Alt R and Alt G, and you're back to your default resting pose in that character rig. I'd also like to again thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video. You can go to hostinger.com slash cggeek and use the coupon code cggeek to get up to 91% off of yearly web hosting plans to succeed faster. Use that link in the description. And yeah, that wraps up the video, guys. Hope you had some fun. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment if you had a question. And I'll see you all in a future video tutorial. Bye-bye.